Okay, welcome back to Battle of Fredericksburg, 160th anniversary playthrough with Across the Rappahannock from the Glory System. And uh, we're back on to turn seven. This is the final turn for the uh, for the game. It is 1830, um, which is uh, late in the day on December 13th. Uh, nighttime is falling rapidly on here, so that's what really ended the, the battle. And we're kind of getting locked in at the same positions or similar positions that uh, that were occurring uh, back then as well. A little bit different though in terms of uh, in terms of the where the <coughs> Union was penetrating and uh, where the Confederates were holding out. So in this case, our units of Wilcox have penetrated here, capturing the one victory hex over here and holding that. So right now we do have a Union victory if they can they can hold that. Um, Couch back here has pushed over Mary's Heights and is actually threatening two victory hexes here and here. Um, potentially a uh, uh, rabbit. And then um, a, another victory condition for the uh, Confederates is the bridges back over here, these uh, pontoon bridges over here that are being threatened by <coughs> D.H. Hill's units, Early's, and A.P. Hill of Jackson's Corps. But I think the real fight is going to be over in here for that one hex of the Telegraph Road, because the Union does have some capability. They do have recovered some units and moved up here. We do have Sturgis that's going to have to weather a uh, potential counterattack before they can get in there to attack, <coughs> as well as, uh, you know, the Union Union uh, units trying to uh, trying to penetrate and trying to uh, get the victory within there. So um, to get started here, the Confederates actually won the initiative, so they chose, uh, of course, it's going to be uh, Lee and Longstreet. Uh, that focuses in there to uh, start off and we're going to start right away with <clears throat> the attack in the center so I'm going to zoom you in to, uh, to this one over here so you can see the Confederate view of the battle there we go yeah there we go and we're going to start off with Hood's division right here and they're going to go into attack to try to knock Sturgis out. Um, that will be helpful if they can do that. Now, <clears throat> first off, we do have Hood has some artillery over here. It's going to take a take a shot uh, back over here at uh, one of Newton's units. I'll flip back the other camera for just a quick second. Back up here, Hood is uh, Hood's artillery is right here, just off camera. He's going to take a shot at these guys right here, try to knock them back uh, or disorder them at least. So he's going to be a uh, he's going to need nine plus four for the strength. Um, range is no modifiers, so it's just plus four. Five plus four is nine, so they do get a cohesion check, and that gets a three, um, which they're okay. All right, so that was Hood's artillery. Next, we've got Hood's movement. <coughs> so this is going to be interesting because what we're going to do is actually have Law A move backward into there. Now you may say, uh-oh, that's going to leave that hex open. You're leaving that open. Well, remember, we've got the whole Lee Longstreet core, which means that once we get over to Ransom's um, and McClaws and Anderson, we can move these guys around to, to cover that hex. Now we're also going to move up um, Robinson A, Ro Roberson A, to move up there, and those two units are going to attack into into those positions. Um, I think we'll also, just in case we have some problems, we're going to move these guys up one, two, and we'll move these guys up. One, two as well, and go from there. All right, so we have our attacks coming up. So first off, with Sturgis's men, now they're disordered, 
so this could be tough for them to shoot back. They're going to get an automatic minus one. And then they are shooting defensive fire into the woods, which is going to be another minus one. So it's actually going to be minus two. Now, they'll have no effect because eight, nine minus two is seven, no effect. And the same with this one. So there's actually going to act to be no defensive fire because it just will not affect anybody. So we'll go right to the attack. So the attack is going to be this. They're going to be 7 and 5 are 12, uh, 5 and 4 are 9, 12 plus 9 is 21, against 14 in here. So that's a nice, perfect 3 to 2 odds. So that's going to be a plus 1 for the Confederates. Now for cohesion, uh, you can probably see right there, it's going to be 8 to 5, so it's going to be plus 3 for the Confederates. So that's plus 4. Um, for the Confederates, and then the Union is in woods, so they're going to get a minus one, so it's going to be a plus, uh, plus three. So for the Confederates, it's going to be five, they'll need a five, with a plus three on the dice. Roll a seven plus three is ten, that is going to do it, so they're going to have to force them back. So the first one retreats, and he will have to take a cohesion test. He's a five. Rolls an 8, so he fails, and he is withdrawn. Next, we have uh, the other one. He is a 4. Rolls a 3, so he's actually okay. So he'll actually go underneath him. And that actually worked out better for us, because that didn't require um, Burns to... Uh, retreat. So now uh, one unit has to move up. Uh, we'll take Robertson A over here. And now they've recaptured all the hexes of the Telegraph Road. So that effectively eliminates a Union victory um, from there. So next, and that's all of Anderson, or excuse me, all of Hood. Uh, next we'll move on to I think we'll go to McLaws first. Um, and what we're going to do is actually have McLaws' artillery take a shot at Brooks, the uh, 1st Brigade, right here. Brooks, so he's going to be 3, strength of 3, um, firing at them in the open, so there's no defense there. So it's plus one for range, so four. So nine with a plus four on the dice. Six plus four is ten. That's going to be a cohesion chest test. Checking cohesion. He is okay. So he did not do anything. All right. So now the other artillery has nothing to shoot at, but he's there for a reason. He didn't uh, shoot for a reason. So he's actually going to move up into there. He can move uh, three points into there. Or actually he can't. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. There's no unit in there. Oh, I did that wrong. Hmm. Okay. We'll get him in there eventually. It's not a big deal. Um, but I wanted to come over here and um, also take a look at getting, um, oh, he's disordered too. Oh, okay, never mind, never mind. So they're actually going to just recover. They'll leave everybody where they are and just recover. That was my little bit of strategic mistake. So he's a five, rolls a four, so he recovers. And then we've got Cobb over here. I think you can see him right here, yep. Um, he's a five as well, rolls a zero. So he is recovered. Okay, so that's McClaws. Now we'll go with Ranson. And he has his artillery's back here. Not going to fire, so that's okay. Um, now Ransom, I'll reposition you just a hair so you can see all of his units. There we go. So Ransom, uh, he is... 
going to keep most of his units where they are, but he is going to move up this guy into here. Artillery will stay there, as I made that little bit of a mistake. I am going to pull... Oh, there's two units there, so he can't move through. I am going to pull him back three. Um, and then he can't move into any place else, so he'll have to stop there. Okay, so that's all of, of Ransom. So he, they effectively control all the uh, all the hexes. This one's kind of vulnerable, but I'm going to remedy that here very soon. Next move is going to be uh, Anderson, I think. Um, and Anderson is these units right over here. And with Anderson, whoop, uh, I don't think we have any artillery that's capable of firing. So we'll go straight to the movement. A couple things I want to do. This I left vulnerable. So I think I can do this without too much of effect. Um, this guy is going to move back. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Just to put him in a better position. He's he's back here now. Um, let's see here. Let me jump you over to the other camera. You can see a little bit better. Here. He's now over in here. Uh, okay, I'm gonna flip around. There we go. So he's in a little bit better position to cover here. The artillery is still here and can cover this, but I'm kind of worried about cavalry coming up here. Um, next, that actually opens us up so we can bring back uh, right here like so. And then also, too, um, up here... Uh, excuse me, give me a minute. Um, I think I need to bring him back, but he can't go there. He's got to go here, which would be two, across a stream, which I think that's going to be a plus one. Um, weather is good. He's artillery plus one, yeah. So he would be two, three to there. Oh, it is downhill. I don't think that matters, though. No, it doesn't matter. So he'd be three to there. And then he can't four, five, six to there. Yeah, he really couldn't. Really couldn't move back very well, can he? Um, well, I still think he'll go there. Uh, he'll be vulnerable to him there, though. That's the only problem. Um, two. Yeah, no, that's even worse. So I think move there. I think he. We'll go with them to protect those guns. I just want to move them, move them back because I can't recover. And these guys are, are are looking to looking to attack. Now back over here, what I need to do is I think leave everybody here. He's good defense right there. There's some good artillery right in here as well. Um, I think actually what I may do though is I may move up the artillery here. And then bring these guys over like so. So that gives a nice wall of artillery um, that the Union will face if they try to go go over here. Now, back towards the center. I think we're in decent shape here. But I will have this unit of um, right uh, come over in with... I'm over here, so that's going to be two, and across the stream is three. Uh, so that's as far as he can go, isn't it? Oh, that's, that's too bad, but I think we'll, I think we'll do, or actually, no, what I can do, i oh, sorry, I should have done this a little differently here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. They will be like that. He will, he can actually move one hex over like so. Um, come in with there, and he will move up with him into there, like so. Okay. So that gives me a nice strong line over here. Now, I think the weakest unit is somewhere over in here, but it's going to be very, very tough for the Union to 
push back through on there. So that's good. So that firms it up. Um, then we have, I'll flip you back to the other camera. We have Picket over here. And with Picket, he's way up here, as you can see. He's basically going to hold the line. I'll just check for artillery. Not much they can do. I'd like to actually, yeah, I can do that. I'm going to swap these guys out. He cannot recover, though, which is fine, which is fine. That's that's okay. Oh, Sturgis needs to go back on here. And I think that will be all for Lee and Longstreet. All right. So that was quite eventful. Um, the Union has lost their last victory point. So that means they will not get a victory, unless they can retake it, of course. The Confederates um, still pushing for the bridge to uh, potentially get a victory. So let's see who the next shit is. It's Jackson. Okay, so, okay, back with the end of Jackson's activation. We'll start over here, because um, we had a little bit of bad luck. D.H. Hill and Early really wanted to try to push the center. So they tried to combine, do a kind combined attack. It failed. So that means they cannot act together and they have to be out of command. So that means they couldn't attack at all. There was a little bit of reshuffling here, but that's about it. Um, which kind of effectively says they're not going to get to the bridges over there. But that's okay. They've still pushed the Union, Union back. When it comes to the uh, AP Hills units over here, uh, again, they looked at these guys and their matchups. Uh, did not really go into a heavy deal, heavy fighting over here, uh, just because artillery on the corner, and then stronger units here and here um, to block them. So not much happened over there. The one big thing that happened for Hill's activation, or for Jackson's activation, was Talaver over here um, striking at one of... Uh, Getty's units that had moved up and pushed them back. So again, that really kind of reinforces at least holding this hex. This is still slightly vulnerable. It's going to be very, very tough for them, for the Union to, to mount an attack, but we'll see what see what they can do. They'll get the chance um, when their activation chip comes up. So next one that comes out is Smith. All right, let's see what Smith can do. Okay, back with... Smith's activation. Um, fortunately, didn't do much. Uh, we tried to get Brooks to combine so we could get an attack on Barksdale here, but they failed. Um, so uh, they had to, again, much like uh, Hill and Early, had to operate independently and out of command. So best thing I could do is recover. Uh, one of Brooks's and several of, of Newton's units uh, recovered, um, but that will that was about it. So unfortunately, I think the evening settling in here is making the fight tougher and tougher for the Union. Next shit up is going to be Pleasanton and the artillery. Okay, so let me... Uh, okay, not much of consequence with the artillery uh, kind of sticking towards the east side of the river. A little bit of artillery over defending the... helping defend the first corps over there, but not much really going on. So we'll move on to the next shit. Wilcox. Okay, Wilcox over here. This is where it gets interesting again, because now the Union has a chance to counterattack here. So what I'm going to do is try to get this set up, because I'm not quite sure where units are in here, and I'll be back with back here. I think I've sorted this all out. It's really a mess for, um, for the attack by... Uh, by um, by the Wilcox core here because it's all they're all intermingled here but I think I've I've worked out the sequence or at least the first one um, Getty's gonna go first he was positioned here they've swung around gonna try to attack Paxton that just attacked here try to counter them so they'll be um, they'll get defensive fire though so they'll be uh, they'll need a seven Confederates will need a seven with a minus one because they are in open ground Roll a two, that's a miss. So the attack goes on. It's going to be five plus five is ten against four. 
and they are in open ground, so that's going to be two to one, but shift up to a three to one because of the open ground. Oh, but it's cross a stream. Right, okay, good catch. And it's a stream forward. So let me just double check the terrain on that to see if they do get the open terrain bonus at a stream forward. Uh, just reduce cost. Uh, stream, uh, stream four G. Nope, they they don't get the bonus, so it stays at a two to one. Okay. Um, now whoop. they will. Now the cohesion is going to be six to eight, so it's going to be minus two. So that negates their plus two um, on there. And then I don't think there's any other train, so it's going to be a straight up roll of five or greater. For them to win. They roll a seven, so they do push them back. Um, so Paxton goes back. He has to take a cohesion test. He's an eight though, so he's going be okay. Rolls a zero, so yeah, he's fine. And he will go back into there, so that will allow one of these units to come up like so. Now that brings up an interesting situation because now we have a little bit of more free reign to attack up here. Now, so that's all for Getty. So now we've got it burns here and then we've got Sturgis, but he can't attack because he's disordered and burns and Sturgis. Yeah, not great. Um, I like to try to evacuate. Well, really, it's just him. Uh, Getty. I do have burns over here. I can move back. Uh, but that doesn't. The sequence is just not going to work out. Sequence is not going to work out unless I try to get Burns and Sturgis to activate together. These he's a three, and he's a three. They're in range of each other, so they could try to activate together. Tough situation. Three plus three is six. So they need a seven, eight, or nine. So there's only a thirty percent chance of them working together. And if they fail, nothing happens. Um, hmm. But my other, my other choice is that Sturgis, uh, or that Burns, attacks on his own. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to try to risk it. So I need a 7 or higher on a co uh, coordinated attack. Rolls a 6. Doesn't get it, so they don't move. Um, I can move units around, which I am going to do. Just can't... Um, Engage. So he's gonna. He's, he, oops. He, okay. he is disordered, so he's actually gonna move one, two, back to there. Uh, oh, Getty. Oh, come on. Getty was over here. And then. Uh, so I'm doing burns first here. So he moves back. This Burns will move back. Again, he can't recover. He could recover, and he could recover. That's Sturgis. Um, yeah, so that's it. So let's do the recoveries. Fortunately, it's going to be kind of anticlimactic, so he recovers like that. And then the artillery in front of him rolls with zero. He's good. All right, now for Sturgis. Uh, boy, it's a tough situation. I've got to move him back because he is disordered. So he's going to go back to there. Um, now I can't get anybody in with Burns. I'll move him back there as well because he is done. So I got Sturgis here. Just there. Hmm. Um, and I 
think that's it. I think that's all. Unfortunately, I think that's going to do it for Wilcox for this activation. Okay, uh, unfortunate. It made some progress, regained some ground, but not really enough to make a difference. Next one's going to be Jackson again. So I'm going to uh, put you back on. Okay, I'm back from Hill's uh, activation. Much similar to what he had for his first activation. Uh, we had a little exchange right here. Again, Paxton pushed back Getty and reclaimed that territory over there. And then, for trying to push to the bridges, uh, I think Jackson's attack here has, has pretty much lost steam. They tried to coordinate again, both Early and Hill, and again, failed. So they really couldn't do too much. and Pretty much remained static, a little bit of movement, but not much. And then AP Hill, again, just holding the line, keeping Smith occupied um, for the moment. Really hard to drive across uh, here, particularly this run, which now separates them uh, within there. So that is all for um, Jackson. And that is second, so that pretty much ends the turn for him. Now we have Couch coming up. So Couch is back here. Now this could get interesting because we do have a secondary potential for them to break through here and take either one of these hexes. It's going to be a tough, tough little battle here. But uh, okay, bringing it back with um, just Hancock at the moment. He has repositioned uh, two units here, and they're going to attack a ransom A right here. Um, this guy will uh, keep him occupied, so they should be able to attack. Now, they'll get defensive fire. Now, they need a 7 with a minus 1 for the uh, print. Well, 0, that's a miss, so the attack goes on. There are 5 plus 5 is 10 against 6. It's a 3 to 1. Uh, excuse me, 3 to 2. And uh, it'll round up for clear terrain bonus, so it'll be a 2 to 1, so it's plus 2. And then cohesion is exactly the same, so it's going to be a five with a plus two on the base. Well, as a seven, that forces them to retreat. They'll go over here, and they will need to do a cohesion test. Well, three plus one is four, so they're okay. So they can actually move forward into there. Very close now, but there's artillery in their way, so it's going to be tough. But they have isolated this unit over here as well are attempting to isolate that unit. So now, moving over to French and Howard, half thinking of coordinating their attack. Um, but I don't think so. I think they will go individually here. French going first. So uh, there's no real artillery fire for him. But his artillery will move up, I think, to help out. So... First off, his artillery goes one, two, three. Um, and stops there, I think. I don't want him to come into there because they're going to attack. These guys are going to attack in here. So they're going to try... Uh, oh, boy. No, he, he's got a... Eh, eh. Let me know. Two to three... Uh, not good. He could go against him. Straight up roll. So, I, uh, actually, I think he's going to soak him up. He's going to occupy him, and he's going to attack there. So, first off, defensive fire needs a 7 with a minus 1 on the dice. Rolls a 1. That's a miss. So, now it's 1 to 1. Same cohesions, open ground. So basically, no modifiers. They need five or greater. They roll a one, so that doesn't do it. So they're going to be disordered. And now check for retreat. And they hold their ground. All right, so that didn't work. Next, we'll move on to Howard. Um, he will activate the uh, reserve artillery to fire up here at these guys. One, two, three. Range of four. Uh, range of three. 
Strength of four. Six plus four is ten. Okay. So that's going to be completion test. He's, uh, the artillery is good. Infantry fails. Now movement for Howard. I think what we want to do here is have him come up to there. And they'll try pushing ransom over here. Where's Howard? Howard's back there. He's gonna come up to here. His artillery. Uh one. Three. Yeah, they're not going to be able to get up the hill. Actually, they'll go over there. And he'll go with them. Okay, so with Howard, um, he will actually move up under him. Like so. And these guys are going to attack, so actually i got to turn them, face them. So there you are going to be defensive fire, uh, open ground, so you're going to need eight with a minus one. Uh, what else? Five. So they're okay. Or I should say a plus one, not a minus one. So the attack continues. Five plus five is ten against five, so it's two to one. Uh, plus two. Cohesion is a plus one. So it's a five with a plus three. Roll says here. <laughs> uh, oh well. And kind of see how the Union's day is going. Uh, retreats. First one's okay. Second one is okay. They stay where they are. Okay, that's it for Couch's first activation. Tough battle there, tough battle. Next one is Reynolds. Okay, so Reynolds is, is all set. Not much uh, action there. Of course, his artillery is all uh, shot up. Uh, infantry is all shot up as well. Did get a little bit of recovery over here. Um, they will hold the bridges um, pretty confident of because Jackson has finished his activations. So they just basically, you know, sit there and uh, you know, provide a block to those bridges. Okay. Next one we come up with is Lee and Longstreet again. Aha. Uh -huh. So there's their second chit. And they're going to be back over here. Okay. So I played through, uh, played through the turn here with uh, Lee and Longstreet. Um, I didn't bring you back on because there wasn't much excitement. A little bit of artillery over here um, really didn't do much damage. These guys really didn't move. There was one attack trying to push him back, but they failed uh, by Ransom A. Uh, and then the rest of these guys stayed put. Did have a little attack over here uh, with McClaws pushing back, reclaiming some more uh, territory, and actually removing uh, one of Smith's units. Um, because he was he was uh, hit by artillery and then by the uh, the attack, so a little bit of movement, just kind of reinforcing, holding the telegraph road, denying the Union victory um, on here. So it's really going in the direction of the Union, or excuse me, Confederates, um, with uh, with the battle here. I think we're pretty much set. We're just down to the last three Union uh, chits. I'll take a look. Oh, we do have Wilcox again. And I think we do have, yeah, we do have a couch in there as well. So let's play out these, uh, this here. Let me take a look at Wilcox, see if there's anything that can be done. Try to get one hex and um, be back with you. Okay, I think we're coming right down to it. So I think what we're going to do is try to have Burns and Sturgis here and here activate together. Now they're both three and three, so that's six. I need to roll a seven or higher for them to combine. They roll a six, that doesn't do it. So they are out of command, and they cannot attack, and that 
that pretty much will will seal it. That was the only way I could do it. The reason why I say that is uh, I'd have to have Sturgis uh, occupy these guys and also Sturgis and Burns combined these two, his two brigades here to attack Ransom and Anderson's units over here. Um, otherwise, it's an impossible, um, impossible shot uh, to get in there. So they don't, they don't do much at all. Uh, a couple of burns, recoveries here. I'll try to do that real quick. Five, no, and four. And he gets it there, so that's good. And Getty uh, over here, there's not much they can do. I think they'll just sit tight because um, I think we're pretty much down to the end because um, I don't think I'm just looking at Couch over here once he comes up um, and Couch comes up as the next one uh, I don't really think there's much he can do I mean he does have this victory hex over here but all of these guys uh really won't have a chance against that artillery in there as well. Um, all of these guys back here are disordered. You can try to shoot at them, but that really doesn't do much for us. Mm, these guys are disordered. Yeah, I think it's I think it's about time to to call it a game. Even even though we have couches attack, the only other one afterwards is is Pleasanton and the artillery. But I think we have to call it at that point. So, at the end of turn 7, 1830, uh, the Confederates hold the line. They've been pushed back a bit, but they do hold the line. They hold the Telegraph Road. They hold these victory hexes across here. They hold Hamilton Crossing way over here. Uh, right back here. Uh, they didn't get the bridges, so it's not an automatic victory for them. But uh, they did hold off the Union, and they did... Pretty much hold off the game. So uh, I thank you for watching on turn seven. Uh, we'll put this one to bed. I am going to do another wrap-up video on this. I've got a couple comments that I want to do, so there will be one more um, coming out after this. But I appreciate you sticking through uh, seven turns. Quite a bit of movement. Hope you enjoyed this. A um, little alternative. I'll call this um, an alternative history of Fredericksburg it wasn't exactly the same similar but not the same um, particularly over here with the uh, the Confederate attack over here so anyways I will be back with a wrap-up on the next video and we'll go from there thanks for watching